Hello everybody and welcome to part 22 of our practical flash tutorial video series. In this video I'm going to be talking about my content management system, uh, some of the benefits and drawbacks to it and all that. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, what am I doing for my content management? Uh, so before I, well originally pythonprogramming.net was a uh, WordPress application so it was made with WordPress which is a PHP plus MySQL kind of marriage where every single post that you write is stored in, in a MySQL database and basically everything is powered by a MySQL database on WordPress and then uh, like a link actually corresponds like the link everything is the MySQL database bottom line and uh, the problem I had with uh, WordPress and the reason I wanted to move away is customization so if you want to customize WordPress you had to do it in a pretty hacky way especially if you wanted to include any sort of scripts and stuff like that and then if you wanted to have like lo like basically scripts or logic that kind of stuff you just didn't have the power that you have if you make your own website so I, I knew eventually I wanted to do it because uh, at first I didn't think I was ever going to do it but then I started running out of ways just to organize the amount of tutorials I had so Q Flask so I brought in Flask and then I was like well how should I actually you know, do the content management because you can do it a bunch of ways one you can uh, you can make an ACP, you can kind of basically write WordPress in Flask. Uh, I, I haven't looked, but I'm almost positive there's going to be someone who's basically done a WordPress version for Flask. Uh, so you could do something like that, uh, but you could, or you could just have an ACP that generates the pages, or uh, you could do everything static, and so you could just make the HTML page yourself, link to it, and so on. But even that was going to be problematic because for me, because I have over, you know, probably coming up now on 800 tutorials, so that would be a huge pain <laughs> to do 800 hand typed. But I wanted to have the flexibility and the customization of having actual pages that corresponded to all the tutorials. That way I could add stuff like if I wanted to graphs or in some of the tutorials I've got the embedded console or in some tutorials whatever just different stuff or different organization maybe some stuff's divided by columns I wanted to be able to incorporate the bootstrap code and all that so what I the way I came up with what I wanted to do is by having static HTML files so everything stored in their template version and the temp all the templates extend the header page and they're stored in a directory and that directory is obviously referenced by the link in the init.py file so I'll show you guys that um, I don't have it up right now but I can bring up the uh, my example of that maybe later I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking like on the actual website itself but for now I want to talk about how are we actually creating the content because like I just said like on the one hand I'm saying oh, I've got these actual static files that we're editing but how are we doing it well we're actually using Python for it so this is my method now uh, again I, I'll just say that this is a really highly customized method just simply for myself I wouldn't necessarily suggest this method to anyone else um, but this is basically me showing the power of Flask because you can write your own back end you can do anything you want so you should do exactly what fits what you want uh, what you want to do so first of all this is content management this is the content management uh, not of our uh, application so this is the content management pi file for our personal or well our website that we've been building and so it just has a little bit of stuff in there not really much so I just decided to bring over the content management file uh, let's just zoom in a little bit uh, from Python programming.net so let's edit that one so it's a lot bigger and there's a little bit of explanation here as well so this is the the full one content topic dict so this is the basics topic dict then we've got pi game OpenGL, kiwi sqlite blah 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 a ton of tutorials right so these are all the tutorials uh, so this is the content management.py um, like I always say uh, this I'm going to just post it so if for whatever reason by the time you're viewing this video if this file is not findable by you either it'll be on pythonprogramming.net or I'll put a link to it in the description it'll be somewhere findable if it's not post a comment and I'll, and I'll put it up so that's the content management and just uh, let me talk about that for a moment so currently this is the organization of 
this topic dict, right? It goes, it's a dictionary with the key of whatever the topic type is. So this is basics, followed by the title of the, the actual tutorial in question, followed by the URL. And then this right here is a list of lists. So as you can see, this is the basics. Then we've got the title, link, title, link, title, link, and it's a long list of all those. And then we move on to Pygame, and then we move on to PyOpenGL. And so, uh, so we have that. So what's the benefit to doing it this way first as far as a content management system is concerned? Well, first of all, uh, instead of ever typing the title uh, of whatever the, the tutorial in question is, we actually reference it. So we import content management and instead of typing the title, we actually say the title is Topic Dict Basics 00. zero. That's the title. The link to that, Topic Dict Basics 0. So that would be Topic Dict Basics 0. And then the first th um, element within there would be, so this would be, uh, sorry, I'm trying to think, make sure I don't screw this up for you guys. <laughs> so the, ti the title will be Topic Dick Basic 0, 0. The link will be Topic Dick Basic 0, 1. So that'll be the URL. So anytime we have a link to, say, the next tutorial, which I do on, on pythonprogramming.net, in the logic, that link is not the actual hard coded link, it's, it's the Topic Dick Basic 0, 1. Okay, you'll see that in a minute though. I'll show you what I mean by that because we're actually in the generation of that is all dynamic as well. So, if we ever wanted to actually change a title, we would just edit the title in the content management.py file. Done. If we ever wanted to change the URL, we would edit it right here. Done. No other edits required. So, uh, that's how we're doing that and why we're doing that. Also, as you can see up here in the future, um, I can add really anything but in my head I'm thinking well I could probably add tags so if I ever had like a search bar or something like that I could add tags I could also have uh, suggestion uh, content so I could have tags and then also suggested based on the topic so if you happen to uh, as you're doing let's say the uh, the graphing tutorial in basics the su some suggested tutorials might be some more advanced graphing tutorials something like that so you can continue adding on to this because it's just a list so if you want to reference later things in the list you just reference that index and it will change nothing to the rest so that's how I'm doing the content management um, so that's that that's the content management file then we have the HTML creator file this is the file that actually creates the HTML templates based on the links and all of that. So uh, as you can see here, cur title, that's a variable. Uh, and then we've got some completed percentage stuff. But this is the HTML template that will be rendered to every HTML file. How are we doing that? Is we come down to each topic, topic in that topic dict, we're just printing it out. But then we're making the directory. We're making each topic and then we're going through and we're actually creating that HTML page with this code. Um, and that's basically it. We're writing it to that page. And then uh, finally, we've got the init code creator. And that's to actually create the, the code in our init.py file. Because uh, if we open up init.py, this is the init.py for the actual website. Let me bring it over. Oh, I did. I guess I sort of have it up. I've got the backup up, so I guess I can show you guys actually what I'm talking about. Anyway, this is the init.py files code for the basics tutorial. So as you can see, that's a lot of code. Like if you had to hand type this or even copy and paste and like edit these little numbers, because you've got these and then you've got some more numbers. Uh, it goes on for a while actually because it's a long list of stuff. Uh, if you had to edit all those, it would take a long time. And then say you wanted to ever change something, that would take a long time. But luckily, I have a script that generates this for us. Uh, so this, again, this is the actual for Python, the real Python programming.net. So what it's doing is that, and then it renders the template for whatever it is. And even the app root is a variable. So remember what I was saying about if you wanted to change the URL, you just change it in content management. You don't have to touch it ever again. And you can see again here, that is the case because the app root topic dick basics 21.1. And then the creation, the title of this is kind of arbitrary. I mean, it doesn't matter what the name of your function actually is, but in our case, you can't actually have a, a variable function name. Actually, you can. You could use Lambda. 
Uh, I'm not sure. I've never tried using Lambda with uh, Flask, but that would be really interesting, actually, if you could. <laughs> anyway, I get chills just thinking about it. So you've got um, basically all this dynamic code besides the name of the function, but honestly, the name of the function is so irrelevant. But I'll show you how quickly we generate this this init.py code. Anyways, it's basically instantaneous, so it's pretty quick. And then the stuff that we're passing through, we pass through completed percentages, which we'll probably talk about later. That's for the user, how much have they completed. Then we pass through the current link, uh, the current title of that page. We pass the next link and the next title. So that's for that next tutorial button. So um, that's what's being passed through. Anyway, I just really wanted, I just wanted to show you the uh, what it looks like. But this is the script, this init code creator script. This is the script that will actually create that init code. And you can even see here, this is the function template. This is the template to that code. So it creates something that does at app root, and then it does all of these basically variables that we'll be talking about later as far as replacing these variables with uh, the stuff that, that we want. So that's the init code creator, and that's it. So, okay, let's see the HTML creator in action. We don't need to zip it, we just want to see it in action. So let's go ahead and F5 to run it. And we can see the printed out uh, HTML files here, or at least the file names. Let's close this, we'll close this. And here we have all the files. Let's zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so these are all of the font or the yeah, these are all the directories containing the templates. So coming over to our actual um, yeah, we'll just do this. Uh, this is the backup of realpythonprogramming.net. So coming over here, we go to templates, and then you've got all this stuff, and then you go into tutorials, and here we have all of the tutorials uh, for Python programming.net, and then you know we can click on any one of them. Let's say Django. Actually, let's do uh, data manipulation. And then you've got your list of the data manipulation ones, and then we can open up ind individual ones, but these ones actually have true content in them, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can see they have the variables as well, and the title is completely variable. And then we come down to the very, very bottom, where you have the next tutorial. What is the next tutorial? Well, it's whatever the next title happens to be, whatever the next link happens to be. Completed is how we're measuring progress for users, and that's variable as well. And then the title on the button itself is, or the you know text on the button itself is the next title, whatever that variable happens to be. So that's how that's created. Now, obviously, all this content, this is content I had to hand write myself, right? Because that's you would have to do that no matter what your content management system is, unless you have Python writing uh, paragraphs and uh, articles for you, which would be really cool. Anyway, maybe with NLTK one of these days we'll do that. Uh, so anyways, that's how that's working. So that's how we just created all of these templates. So now we can go, let's, let's go ahead and open up data manipulation. So we were just looking at that just a moment ago. I don't remember which one we looked at, but we'll look at one of these. And so here is the template. The template is complete. We've got current title. We've got, um, I put this here. This is to embed uh, a responsive YouTube video. So I just have that there just for myself because I always have that. So I wanted that in my template. Here's the title. Here's some paragraph tags written there for me just in case I want them. Uh, this is a collapsible, basically like a spoiler. I just wanted to always have <laughs> have that there uh, for reference. Uh, and then here, this is uh, a divider. So on one side, you could have some code. On the other side, you could have an explanation. And all of this is bootstrap code, so it's responsive and all that. And then finally, the bottom button is there. So that's how it is on every single template for a tutorial. And then I start writing whatever I need to write. Or in this case, I, most of it was actually moved from WordPress. I actually did that dynamically. But I really don't see any point to cover that. So I'm not going to really worry about that. But for new tutorials, this is exactly what I do. Make this, and I type right into this uh, page here. And then anytime I want to add buttons or fancy HTML or custom anything, it's super easy. And again, it extends header and all that. So anyway, that's the, uh, let's go scripts. So that's that. That was the HTML creator. I'm going to get rid of it, these for now, because they're just in the way. Uh, so that was the HTML creator. And now how about the init code creator? Uh, so again, there's all that. Let's run it. 
and it literally just spits out a ton of init.py uh, code. So you literally come here and you copy and paste this code. That's all I do, copy, paste, done. And anytime I want to change anything major that like, for example, would change the function, let's say name, um, you can you just come in here and rerun that one time, copy, paste, done. And so there's that. Uh, the only thing I'll just mention here is when you have a script, you can use this script if you want, uh, but whenever you have a script that's creating function names, you have to be careful. You need to get rid of any dashes. You can't have dashes in function names. You can't obviously have spaces. You can't have commas. You can't, because basically the function name was the title. I just took the title. So then I have these replacement functions basically for all kinds of stuff that cannot be in a function name. Brackets, periods, grammar symbols, and all kinds of fun stuff. Anyway, that's that. So um, hopefully that was a decent coverage of uh, the content management. Again, I'll put these files up. There's You guys can view them and uh, ask more questions if you happen to have them. I thought about just you know hand coding all of these and talking about it as I went through, but I think this content management system, one, maybe isn't even the best. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if someone could think of something a little better uh, than what I've got going on. But I think it's a good illustration of how you can write your own content management system with Flask and it's super easy. Um, and at least I like it. It's pretty quick for me to make edits or make changes and stuff like that. And I especially like it because I made it and it makes sense to me, right? And so if you can make your own modules like that, sometimes it actually uh, it helps. So um, so that's that. Anyway, um, so yeah, leave them below if you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.